talk about hand saws. Uh, I sanded in the front of the heart shaped chest and uh, I think that it looks uh, better because I sanded a lot of that red off but it gave it a look like it's hmm, I think it looks good now it's been varnished and uh, it looks much better that uh, the reds more muted with the uh, wood grain showing through so I like it looks good one more coat of varnish and that's finished but what I wanted to talk about was hand saws and I meant to do this uh, a couple days ago but something went wrong with the video and uh, it wouldn't uh, download onto YouTube <clears throat> the original video that I made about hand saws and the point that I was trying to get across about hand saws is the difference between the Japanese and the traditional type hand saw so I bought a variety of hand saws here <clears throat> this is a traditional type of hand saw this hand saw has uh, a traditional type handle and how it works is it works on a push stroke you push it through the wood uh, here's another example of a traditional type of handsaw this one uh, is made in Scandinavia I think and it pushes through the wood as well now here's a very old Japanese cross cut and rip saw that I bought quite a few years back uh, I bought this before the Japanese saws were popular uh, in this country. I had to buy it uh, from a specialty shop and I only bought the blade and I ma made the handle myself. And I've had this saw uh, going back to, uh, must be back before the year 2000. Anyway, you can see the rust on it. It's kind of old. The blade's very thin and it works on the pull stroke instead of the push stroke. And it's a Japanese saw. Here's another example of a Japanese type saw. Very, very thin blade. The blade's paper thin. Meaning that it takes a very thin kerf in the wood. And what the kerf is, is the width of the wood that you have to cut away when you're making a saw cut. See? The width of that cut through the wood. That's the kerf. It's the American saws type of saws, they make a very wide kerf through the wood, meaning that you, uh, you're taking a lot more wood away as you go. And there's a reason why they have to do that. Because they work on a push stroke, they have to make the blade thicker. Because if you observe, when I push the blade, what happens? I bend the blade. So if the blade's not thick, the blade will bend easily. So if you make a paper thin blade, obviously, and you're pushing, what happens is the blade will bend as it goes through the wood and it will jam. So they have to make the blade thicker, thereby thickening the kerf. The Japanese have a different idea, a different approach, because this is another Japanese saw. Instead of, the blade cannot bend if you're pulling, what happens is the only thing you'll ever do is straighten the blade, no matter how thin it is. So they make it so when you're pulling, the blade could be very thin, thereby thinning making the kerf thinner. So that's the whole idea across working on the pull stroke. You see that side is cutting now when I pull. And as I pull, I'm straightening the blade. If I were to push, see the blade bending? That's the principle behind the Japanese song, why the, curves can, the kerf can be so thin, as in comparison. There's another problem. <coughs> with the uh, traditional type saws. Back in the 1950s and in the 60s when they were very popular before uh, circular saws were so popular, uh, I'm talking about circular saws you plug into electricity, uh, back before they were popular these saws used to work very good because they didn't make the blade have uh, too much bite or too many uh, coarse teeth. But in the modern era, what they're doing is, is they're making the teeth much coarser, much, much, much more coarser. So that when you're pushing them through the wood, I won't even budge. I'd have to be an ape. That's got such coarse teeth. 
If I was strong enough to push that through the wood, I'd rip through that wood so fast it would be like a chainsaw. That's why the blade is so thick. That blade is super thick. They're making them much more aggressive, the teeth and the tooth patterns. What they're doing is, is they're trying to make it so the saw will cut faster, but in the end, what they're doing is making it so the saw is very hard to use. And if you do have enough energy to push it through, heaven forbid it, jump and catch your hand. Because it'll gash you. It'll make a huge cut. Uh, this saw here doesn't have near as aggressive a pattern. If you notice, it started here. It's still pretty aggressive. You can see it grabs there. Still, it's pretty darn aggressive. It's starting to grab a bit too quick. But it's only half as aggressive as that, as that one there. Still, that's a big problem. So, what I would look for is if I was buying a traditional type of saw, I would look for a less aggressive tooth pattern so that it'll be easier to push through the wood. It'll still cut fast. But with these really aggressive tooth patterns that they're making, like this saw right here, and this saw right here, it's almost impossible to use the thing. Unless you're built like a gorilla, unless you're built like the Hulk. Anyway, so you see the difference with this saw, Japanese saw. I'm not working hard. And it's making a very thin curve. It's making a very thin curve right through the wood. Much easier to use. And this, uh, this saw is, is, uh, has been made probably, uh, it's a copy off of a Japanese type saw. So I hope this is helpful to you to understand a little bit more about the saws and how they work. This, uh, this old cross cut and rip that I bought years ago, this Japanese saw right here, I love this saw. You can see how quick it cuts even now and how easy it is to use and light and small. And it can probably outcut these much bigger saws. Anyway, there it is, saws.